But this is the thing that I like is that you don't have to have 50 different views of all the different countries, all the different trips, all of the different this. Depending on what page you're going to go into, that is what you're going to see. If you're going to go into the page of the trip, you're only going to see the things related to that trip. If you go into the page of the country, you're going to see the things related to that whole country. All of the cities you've been to in that country, all of the trips you've been on in that country, all the food you tried, all the journal entries you've made, you get the point. So hello, welcome back to the channel. I am so excited to make this video today because I have been working on this Notion template for the longest time. It was only this year that I really started to travel to new places I've never been to before. So what I thought I was missing was a really good Notion travel page to take note of places I'm visiting, new food I'm trying, journal entries and like thoughts and just general things to remember from the trip. I really thought like I am missing all of this information, like I have nowhere to keep this. So I started making a travel Notion page for myself and then I got so into it, I got so detailed with the page that I was like, you know what, I'm going to make this a template. I'm gonna make a video about it. I'm gonna show it to you guys because I cannot lie I am very proud of this page. This is my favorite page I've ever made. It is so in-depth But before I give you guys the tour I want to say that this template is gonna be on my website Which is a new sentence for me because I have a website now This is the first video where I'm talking about my website So if you want to get this template, it will be on my website and let us get into it because there is so much to cover <laughs> So welcome to my beautiful travel dashboard here on the left We have the menu which consists of all of the databases of this page so the trips the countries the cities the places and activities that you have done on your trips the bucket list for places you want to go and activities you want to do your little travel journal the food you have tried and also the accommodation you have stayed at in the middle here we have our upcoming trips so trips that you have not been on yet and also trips that are ongoing so if you're currently on a trip it will also show up here and you also have your little potential trips that you're thinking about but they're not like booked they're not set in stone there's no date and here we have our little map. I honestly love this map. You can move it around like you can zoom in and look at different cities in a specific place It's very nice having this here It honestly brings the page to life because it feels like you have like a little globe beside you And even if you already know that like I have these trips planned I'm not looking to go on another trip. It's just nice to be able to like scroll around and be like hmm I want to go to Las Vegas. I think we're gonna start with just this first page So as I said in the middle you have the upcoming trips but the thing I like about this is that I wrote up these formulas to first of all tell you how many days are left until that trip and also to tell you how long you're going to be there so I did not type in 24 days left I did not type in 15 days 14 nights that's all automatic so depending on when I change the date it will automatically change so for example you can see right here these are two formulas if I change this to last like a few days longer it automatically changes and another thing I really like is that if you're currently on your trip then it's gonna say enjoy your trip which is so cute I really like it I really got into formulas recently I'm getting better at them so I really like this little feature because it just adds a little extra like Grand Canaria 2020 enjoy your trip because I'm on my trip right now and then we also have the status and the type of trip that it is so like upcoming trip past trip potential trip and if you scroll down you're gonna see the past trip so I have put in all of my trips since August 2018 because that's as far as my email went and I don't remember the days I traveled beyond that and also with the formula that counts down how many days are left it does the same here but it says how many days ago you were in there so it counts from the last day you were there until now and it counts how many days ago you were there so within all of these trips there's a whole page inside full of information it's not just the information that you're seeing here on the card there's a whole page I'm gonna give you guys a little preview but you're not fully gonna understand until I you guys the databases so as you can see this is all the info that you're seeing initially on the card and if you scroll down we have a lot more so this is the place where you're going to put in the accommodation that you're going to be staying at just for personal information it's not linked to any database and then this is the place where you would write what time you're leaving and arriving so for example on the 2nd of july i'm leaving from stansted airport i don't know what my departure time is and the arrival airport is lpa i also don't know what my arrival time is so I'm gonna figure that out later and as you can see the little icons say A to B So there is detail in here, which is why I really love this page because it has all of the detail And then if we scroll down, we have a little packing list I honestly personally I am not gonna use this as like five pairs of socks 
three t-shirts this is not the type of thing i would use for me this is more like do i need to buy a gift for anyone do i need to bring something on this trip that i don't usually bring on another trip so for example like am i gonna work on this trip should i bring my laptop should i bring my camera like these are like the type of things that i don't bring on every single trip so you can always make this a toggle so that you can make it smaller like if your list is really long but this size is a perfect size and then down here we have important documents this is where you can put like your covid pass your vaccination pass your tickets or whatever you need and i wouldn't rely on it in the airport in case like you have no internet and you can't access them but like if you have a trip coming up in like five months and you don't want to like keep going on your email trying to find your boarding pass just if you embed your pdfs in here everything will be together and then the day before your flight like download those pdfs into a place where you know you'll have them even if you don't have wi-fi and then they'll all be together this is just kind of like the place to initially organize them and then as you can see once again we have this little map but the difference between this map and the main map is that this map will be the map of where you're going and this sadly kids i cannot automate this yet so i'm gonna give you guys the quickest tutorial on how to do that because i just find it it's really nice like it just like for example if i go to my like latvia page i have riga right here if i go into my lisbon trip we have lisbon right here i just feel like it makes the page also a little bit more alive a little bit more real like oh my god this is happening so let me quickly show you guys how to do this so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go on google maps and find whatever you want to see on your map so say for example i'm going to paris what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep the area that you want in your map in the center and keep in mind that it doesn't take the area of this whole map it takes like this little square kind of so if you copy this link and go in here and press replace paste the link embed map you will have the map of paris also little hack you can actually do this for journeys as well so we're going from lisbon airport to sintra a very random trip for you guys there but if you go ahead and copy this link and you paste it in here you will actually see the trip saved so if you're going on like a really long road trip and you're making a page out of it this is a really nice thing to do okay so if we move on we have our itinerary i can never say that word and also we have these little pages here that i didn't talk about but i'm gonna go through the databases first and then we're gonna come back to these because these are more database stuff and these are related to these ones so let's go through our little menu first so the first thing we have is trips trips is the database that you're seeing on the main page it is the upcoming trips it is the potential trips it is the past trips it's everything together but in list format so if you just want to quickly edit something like for example you just want to change this trip from upcoming to potential like maybe you cancelled it but you might still go in the future you can change it right here it's just like a quicker way to access that information without seeing all of the pictures so yeah that's very straight to the point this is what you guys have been seeing countries this is my pride and joy guys tell me why i made a page for every single country in the world actually more than all the countries in the world there's 197 countries and i have 217 pages so i included some constituent countries which is too much info which is not interesting but like for example aruba is not actually a sovereign state like if you look it up it's not actually a country it's part of of the kingdom of netherlands but it's a constituent country which means it is technically a country but it's not because it's part of netherlands so i included some of the constituent countries in here so we have a little bit more choice and all 217 of these countries have a flag they have a picture set to it and every single country that you open the page to there is all of this info which you don't have to do anything all of the filters are already set i'm gonna show you guys how that works but just to explain how much time an effort this took <laughs> so i'm just gonna turn the images off for now because i feel like they make the computer go a lot slower and the reason for the pictures was not actually for this page it was for these two but we're gonna get into that in a second so let me show you guys an example of a country where i have information in it already so for example let's go to brazil if i open up this page we have a few little sections so the first section we have is notes so just like random notes like if you've been to the country where like before you go to the country so like brazil i need to write down that i definitely need 
need to get a sim card before coming next time because like this whole trip that i went on before january i did not have a sim card and i ended up like staying at home all the time because i had no internet and i was just like worried that i was gonna get lost so when we scroll down you're first gonna see all of the trips that you've been to on this country i've only been to brazil once so that's why i only have one trip that comes up is the date and the name of the trip and also its status the next thing that we're gonna see are the places you've been to and the places on your bucket list we're gonna get into this in another database this is like a preview of the databases once again then you're gonna see the food that you've tried the rating the name and the bucket list so what do you want to try the next thing we have is the travel journal i did not make any entries when i was in brazil and then the next section we have is the accommodation where i stayed at every single country has this already you don't have to set anything and the cool thing is that when you're seeing all of those places and you're seeing all of that food you're not seeing all of the food you've tried from all your trips you're specifically only seeing food that you've tried in brazil it is a filtered view it happens automatically you don't have to manually select anything so for example turkey as you can see this list of places is not the same list we just saw in brazil but this is the same database so i feel like i'm over explaining myself but i just love notion for this because it's one big database but it's already filtered so that i'm only seeing the places that are in turkey so yeah we have the places the food the travel journal and the accommodation i should have shown this page this page has more <laughs> more information than the brazil page the next view we have is visited so it's still the same database just a different view you're now seeing the pictures as well i thought this was a lot better because there's no way well not that there's no way but most people haven't visited all of the countries in the world so it's nice to have a separate page because you get lost in here so if i choose a country and click that i've visited it it will show up here where is it oh my god it will show up here with the picture so i didn't have to set anything also you're free to change these pictures these are just kind of like the default ones that i set and then the next thing we have is the bucket list so this is the same thing as the thing before except this is places where you haven't been but you do want to go and then these are the places where you've been obviously so the next page we have here is cities these are the cities and the towns that you've been to this is not the place to write down every city of a country that is not the point the point of this is to first of all if you go into the page of the country so if i go into turkey here i can direct Directly see what cities I've been to so I can see that I've been in Cappadocia I've been in Istanbul, Pamukkale, Selçuk, Ayvalık I don't know if I'm pronouncing these right and also you can see like which trips you were on when you were in that city so for example since 2018 I have been in Riga one two three four five six times and i can see specifically on which trip i was there or for example i can see that i've only been in valencia once with my mom on this trip right here and i can go straight into this trip to see the information and yeah so for each trip you can select multiple cities so if you went to multiple cities you don't have to do a lot of separate trips and that was the whole point of having the cities so the next database we have is places so this whole page is places that you've already been to and activities that you have already done this does not not include your bucket list so this is just like a big gallery of all the places you've been to it's nice to remember for example in three years i might not remember that i went to this specific orchateria in santa catalina in valencia but this way i can see that i was there and then we have a different view for our favorites this is pretty self-explanatory like you can visit a lot of places and do a lot of activities but you'll always still have your favorites so if you go into one of the pages and click favorites it will automatically move in here and it's just like a nice little memory of like all of your favorite favorite things you've done and things you've seen so the next page we have is bucket list this is essentially the same database but just like a different view but if you have something on your database that you have not done yet you can easily move it over to the things you have done without actually having to manually move it so let me show you guys how that works for example let's choose praia vermelha as you can see this is not a trip that has happened yet i did not see this place on my last trip and i have not yet organized any trip coming up so I cannot choose a trip to associate this place with so this is a roll-up property which some of you guys might not know it's more of an advanced feature of Notion so for example if I choose Riga it will automatically say that Riga is in Latvia and you don't have to do anything manually there it automatically works that out because the trips are connected to the countries and that is the beauty of the databases but the problem is what if this is not yet associated to a trip so that is why we have the country 
manual here so if you don't have it associated to a trip yet you will manually have to enter which country this place is in so for example like if this place was in kazakhstan i would have to manually place that in there because otherwise how is it going to know if you haven't organized a trip to kazakhstan yet so where the problem kind of occurs is if you do finally have a trip organized and you know that you're going to see this place on this specific trip say for example you choose my first solo trip to rio that is where i saw it you can see now the country shows up twice and you're gonna see it twice here which is not what you want i mean some people might not mind that for me like as a detail perfectionist i do not like this so once you do associate it with a trip make sure to take this out this is only the manual country that you place when you don't know if you have a trip yet once you have a trip you can take it out the next page we have is a travel journal this is also very self-explanatory you have your journal here you have the date of when you wrote that journal entry and what trip you were on anyway the next thing we have is food i love this page and i think it's just because it's about food this is basically a little gallery of the food you have tried once again it's the name it's the country where you tried it the rating also we have our favorites in here the favorites are things that you rated five stars they're automatically going to go in here and also the little bucket list i don't have a lot of food on here yet but when i was in rio these are things that i never got to try this is specifically intended for the first time you try something it's nice to remember these things like i forgot i tried so many things and this isn't even all of it this is like a fifth of what i've tried on my recent trips so i really like this page and the next page we have is very similar format so it is the hotels and stuff that you've been in this is just for yourself i personally really wanted this because sometimes if i'm going back to a place obviously trying new things is good but sometimes with hotels if you're going to a place where you just need to be comfortable or like you want to recommend something to your family or your friends this is a really good page to have so for example if i'm going back to france and i'm going with like three four people i would honestly go back to the airbnb that we were in the last time because i really really liked it also we're gonna get into the little templates i made on each database later but as you can see you can choose if it's a hotel a hostel or an airbnb and all this does is it just changes the little icon which is a small thing but it's such it just adds so much so yeah those are all of the main databases and now we can go back to the little trip page where you can see specifically stuff about your trip so what we missed here last time is we didn't go into these three pages so these three pages are essentially what you just saw so if we go into my rio trip page and we go into the places i visited you can see straight away the things that i saw on this trip specifically so for example if i have been to rio three times and i saw different things each time this is not going to show everything i've seen in brazil this specifically only shows the things you've seen on that specific trip and if you add a new place that you've been to it's automatically going to add it to that trip and that country you don't have to do anything and we have the same thing with the food in the journal it is literally what you guys have just seen of the food in the journal Journal, but it only specifically shows that trip so for example if i've been to riga like five different times it's not going to show all of my journal entries from every single time i've been to riga it's going to show that specific trip like that specific little amount of time and if i just want to see all of the journal entries for riga all i have to go is i need to go into the latvia page and i will see everything all together and i forgot to show you guys down on the bottom here we have the itinerary this is actually one of the main things i should probably mention in the beginning but it's okay so what we have here is we just have the days of the trip so day one day two day three day four however many days you have to add a day you just click here right day eight and color code it how you want and what you're gonna see here is your activities for that specific day so for example day one you arrive you take a taxi you go to the restaurant so when you create a new activity you can type in how much it's gonna cost if you already know and the itinerary is basically gonna give you a sum of everything specifically from that day so if you're budgeting on how much your trip is going to cost this is a nice way to see it very easily like you can easily see everything that you're doing on this trip and also like at the same time you're seeing this price and if you want to see everything a little bit more clearer you have this expenses view where you're just going to see a sum of the whole trip so for example this whole trip is going to cost me 904 euro and obviously you can edit this you can make this dollars you can make it whatever but i'm going to do euro and also something i really like is that you can add like pictures here to to show more like give a general vibe of actually what your week is going to look like because for example taxi arriving from the airport these type of things don't need pictures you just need to know that that is happening then i'm going to pay this price then like you just need to know what's happening but these type of things it's nice to kind of give a brief idea of what your day is going to look like another thing that i really like is that if you created a task and it 
is a flight, traveling, or restaurant or a cafe, you can go ahead and press on one of these templates. All it's going to do is it's going to add that icon. And I feel like it just makes it a little bit more visual. So that is all you need to know for the trip page. But this is the thing that I like is that you don't have to have. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to create a trip from scratch. I'm going to add some food. I'm going to add some places. We're going to add a new country even. And I'm just going to show you guys that this is actually really easy. I feel like it looks complex from the outside because it has a lot, but there's not really anything you have to do manually. A lot of it just happens itself. I'm going to show you guys the kind of natural process of how this works for me. So I don't specifically go on to food and just write down random food that I want to try from the Netherlands. Like it doesn't work like that for me. It's more of like a natural rhythm. So what it usually starts with is I usually have a new trip coming up. So say for example, I'm going to Peru. Also, we're going to add a city. So I'm just going to say Lima. With this city, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click into the city and just press here, new city. It just adds this little icon. This is just a quick little thing. It makes things look a little bit more aesthetic. So as you can see here now, the city has a little pin. We're going to give it a title and we're going to be going in the 14th of December until the 29th of December. So straight away, automatically, it lasts 16 days, 15 nights, and there's 189 days left. This is a friend's trip. All you have to do is press new trip and it will all load and all of the filters have already been applied. So if you click into the places visited, if you click into the food I've tried, it's all going to be done specifically so that it's specifically that Lima trip. It's no other trip. It's only that trip. So now let's say that I'm already in Peru and I'm updating this page as I'm in Peru to document what I've been experiencing on this trip. So say, for example, today I went to Plaza Mayor in Lima. We're going to go into places visited and I'm going to add Plaza Mayor. So was very crowded, but still beautiful. I've actually never been in Peru, so I'm just making things up. But Plaza Mayor does exist. The reason this is a list without pictures is I feel like when you're on the trip, it's a lot easier to take note of things quickly. Just like write down the name, write down a note. Once you have time, you just click onto the gallery. As you can see, there's no image here. So this is when you're going to go and you're going to say that this is the place that I've visited and you're going to add in an image. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy image address and we're just going to embed the picture in. I don't have to download anything. It is very simple. And boom. Now, if you go into that big places database, it is going to be on there you didn't have to do anything you just updated your own trip and it just automatically went into that database so to get this little icon you just press here new place activity and it's just going to update the icon it's not going to change anything else so most of my pages have this i just want to say this now for example if you're adding a new city you're going to like write the name of the city and you're going to open it up and you're going to press new city it's just going to add that little icon it just makes it fit and look a little bit nicer and then honestly the food i've tried and the journal entries is the same thing I just did with places visited. I was honestly going to explain all of it, but it is that straightforward. Like traveling is about being in the moment. And in the moment, you should honestly just write down the name, write down some quick little things that you might forget later on, but don't focus on like the image and all of these little details because you need to live it in the moment, but it's also good to document it, which is why we have the list first. And then the journal is exactly the same, except it's actually a lot easier. You honestly just put the date and the name and the journal. Once you open it, up once again it's going to be empty but there's an option to press new journal entry and this is just like a quick little prompt like highlights of the day what you saw and you can also add an image if you want to edit this like if you want to have your own prompts you can go ahead and click onto this little arrow and click edit template and you're going to edit this template so you can if you have like three questions to ask yourself every day or you have like very specific prompts this is the place where you would change it i just set like a very basic one that like i would personally track like i don't think i would do do something very extra because then I would probably end up not doing it. <laughs> so for the last thing, I'm just going to show you guys how to create a new country and why you might want to create a new country because you're going to be like, what do you mean? Like you cannot create a country. What do you mean? But basically, as I said, there's actually officially 197 countries in the world and this list has 217 as far as I'm aware. And as I said, it's because some countries are not sovereign states, which is what we know as an official country. Some of them might be constituent countries. So for example, England is not a country like the UK is the country. But the thing is, England is still a country, but it's just not a sovereign state. It's the constituent country. So, and also sometimes there's islands, which could be very, very far away from the mainland of the country. So you could almost like see them as two separate things if those are places that you visit a lot. So for example, in my case, I have Gran Canaria in Spain. Gran Canaria is part of Spain. Like that is not up for debate. Gran Canaria belongs to Spain. But if you look at them geographically, they are quite separate. Like Gran Canaria is geographically speaking in 
Africa. Spain is not. So they're quite far away. They're quite distant. Spain and Gran Canaria are both really big parts of my life and they're very separate. So to a normal person, this might not matter. So for example, like if I'm not living in Portugal or in the Azores, like it might not matter to me that I don't have the Azores on here because I've never been to Azores. I'm not planning to go anytime soon. Like I don't need it as two separate countries. Whereas for me, Gran Canaria and Spain, it's really important to have that divide because I have family living in Gran Canaria. I visit almost every single year. And next year, not even next year, oh my God, in like three months, I'm going to be living in mainland Spain. So whenever I visit my family in Gran Canaria, it's not like the type of thing where it's like, oh, this is like a road trip. Like I'm just going to another city in Spain. Like, no, it's like a proper trip. It's like a proper trip that I have to go on a plane for. It feels like a proper trip. It's like a holiday. So for me, it's important to have that divide as if it's like two different countries. Also, for example, if you're traveling all around the US, you can honestly add the states as countries. I know they are not countries, but they're honestly as big as most European countries, if not bigger. So I feel like you could definitely add some US states as countries. I know they're not countries, like no one come at me. I'm just saying like, there's a lot of cities within every single state. So it would make sense to add the states as countries because they're honestly as big as countries. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new country and we're gonna write in the Canary, Canary Islands and feel free to add a flag. If there's no flag, I mean, you can add whatever you want. Canary Islands has a flag. Also, you're gonna have to write in which continent it's on and yeah, you just fill in any information you need to there. So like, actually, because we just did that, because we split up a country, I'm gonna go to Spain and I'm gonna remove my two Gran Canaria trips because now I'm separating it. Now I just want it to be mainland Spain and the Canary Islands. So that is important. Make sure there's no like doubling up anywhere. And yeah, that is it. You don't have to do anything else because you pressed on that template. Everything is already filled in. All of the filters are all automatically set as the country that you just created and yeah that is it i love it so much i cannot explain to you how happy i am with it i feel like it just captures all the information you need without needing too much like i feel like with notion i always feel the need to redo my pages because first of all i either get bored of them or second of all it's just either not capturing enough information or it's all these little details that don't matter this is perfect because i can go as detailed and non-detailed as a trip as i want but it's still keeping all of that information in little groups that are really useful to look at so so yeah i hope you guys enjoy this tour just a reminder that if you want to get this template it's going to be on my website i think it's going to be annalinkowska.com slash templates still crazy to me that i have a website this is the first video that i'm like announcing my website because i just made it recently please do let me know if there's other templates you'd like me to make because honestly i feel like this is a lot better for me just spending a lot of time perfecting the template and then almost never having to change it again it's so much more efficient so let me know if you want me to make any other templates and i will work on it because this is honestly like the most fun thing ever for me so but anyway i love you guys i will see you guys in another video bye